Got my notes. Got my notes with me. This is actually my journal. I have different journals. And they're all thoughts, thoughts that are factual or based on religion. Three, two, one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everyone is doing well. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Welcome back to the channel. Ahlan wa sahlan. Once again, I don't know why I said that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to make this video. So anyways, today I'm going to share with you a new perspective or a fresh perspective on the worship this act of worship we call Hajj. I was reading up about Hajj, about Zul Hijjah, and I found five new perspectives about Hajj, which you will blow your mind, literally blow your mind. Okay, so today I'm going to share with you from my journal. So the first thing, the first thing that you probably should know about Hajj is this. The thing that you know about Hajj is, okay, people go to Hajj, people make tawaf, they do sa'i at the Baytul Haram around the Kaaba. This is something that you probably know about Hajj. Okay, but I'm going to, I'm going to, extend that or I'm going to expand your mind a little bit by sharing something. And that is, if you look at the acts of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do, Hajj is the only one that is tied or linked to time and space or time and place. Let me explain. Let me explain. If you look at the five pillars of Islam, you'll realize that they all have their own attributes that makes them special. For example, let's go through one by one. The first one is Shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah. You have to recite this at least, at least a minimum of once in your life. Like everyone knows this. So it's not really linked to place, you can say it anytime during like your lifetime. It's t it's more like tied to time, the shahada. You have to say it once in your life as a Muslim. You have to testify that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger. This is the shahada. And then comes the salah. Now salah is an act of worship. For us Muslims, we have five daily prayers that we have to pray. Okay, if you have not prayed, pause this video go and pray and then come back. So the five daily prayers, this is an act of worship that is linked to time. So when the sun is at a specific position, it, it's Zuhur, it's Asar, it's Maghrib, so on and so forth. Or it's attached to, or it's determined by time. Okay, it's not determined by place because you can pray literally anywhere except the toilet, of course. You can pray at home, you can pray at your school, you can pray at your university, at the mosque, right? So it's not specifically tied to a place, it's tied to time. Then comes Saum or fasting in the month of Ramadan. So it's tied to time. Okay, you can fast anywhere, but it's attached to time. In other words, when Ramadan comes in, then you fast. Now, then it comes Zakah. Zakah is also attached to time. You can pay Zakah anywhere. The moment you reach a certain level uh, of wealth and you hold it for more than one year or at least one year, then you are obligated to pay Zakah. But the only act amongst the five pillars that is attached to time and place is Hajj. If you want to do Hajj, you have to go to Baytul, Baytul Haram. You have to go to Mecca to fulfill this pillar of Islam. Like you must go. It's not possible to do Hajj at home. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done that long time ago. <laughs> So you have to do your Hajj at Mecca. It's a must. And you can only do Hajj when it's Dhul Hijjah. Because one of the pillars of Hajj is you have to do Wukuf at Arafah, which is on the 9th. You have to be there on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, right? So this is the only act of worship that is linked to time and place. like, And that's why it is great. And what that's why it is one of the best acts of worship that you can do. That's the first point. The second point is that Hajj is a completion of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. Let me explain. Now, have you ever wondered why, like whenever someone goes to Hajj, when they come back, you, you start calling them Al-Hajj, Hajji. Hajja. But when someone prays, or when someone pays the zakah, when someone fasts in the month of Ramadan, when someone says their shahada, you don't call them that, with that name. Oh, uh, Musalli. So and so. Oh, someone, this guy, he has prayed. He's the prayer Muhammad. He's the one who has fasted. He's the faster Muhammad. You don't say that. But when someone goes to Hajj, when they come back, all of a sudden they're given this name, Hajj something, right? Have you ever wondered, like, why? Why is that so? Have you ever wondered that? It's because Hajj is the completion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings upon you. So the moment you go there, it is a completion of your deen, i.e. you completed the five pillars of Islam, and it is a completion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings upon you. Because you get to taste different acts of worship, including the most difficult one, which is Hajj. Not everyone has the opportunity to do Hajj. And interestingly, the verse that talks about completion of favors was also revealed during Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي وراديت لكم الإسلام دينا This day I have perfected for you this religion and I have completed my favors upon you and I have chosen for you Islam as your religion. The act that is associated to this verse is also Hajj, which is a completion of the five pillars of Islam for a Muslim. Like, 
What? The third thing that I would like to share about Hajj. It's not only an act of worship that in which you go to Mecca, you do Tawaf, you do Sa'is. It's even more than that. Let me explain. Let me explain. Going for Hajj, is, it's not only a spiritual journey, but it, it's also teaching us how to live life. When you go to Hajj, you're not supposed to cut trees. You're not supposed to hunt. You're not supposed to kill animals. You're not supposed to argue with people around you. And everyone is wearing the same clothes. You're supposed to humble yourself. It teaches us how to live life. And we do that just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. It teaches us how to live life, even including things that are non-living things. We're supposed to interact with everything around us in a way that has adab, full adab. And, and etiquette and it's shown in hajj just live life like simple and for a lot of people like if you ask them like leave out religion for once if you tell me to like kiss a stone out of worship it's not gonna make sense to me let's not pretend to be uh <laughs> let's not pretend to be like oh yeah it makes sense to me because islam is all about sense no islam is about faith it's sensible at times but at times it's about faith it's about trusting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the the fact that we go to mecca we go to the kaaba just to kiss a black stone on top of other things that we were doing just to kiss a black stone it's not gonna make sense to a lot of people but the fact that we did that the fact that we're we're going to do that shows that you know we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that sets us up for how we're going to live life how we're supposed to live life we're supposed to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course sometimes certain things might not make sense to us it doesn't make sense for us to go and kiss a black stone it doesn't make sense for us to just pray five times a day why not four why not three why not six it doesn't make sense for us to like fast in an entire month in Ramadan why not why can't I just eat it doesn't make sense right but Islam is not entirely about making sense but it's about Faith, it's about trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the beautiful thing about Islam. Now, the next thing is that when you go to Hajj or Umrah, it is the only time when you can pray in all directions facing the Kaaba. You can pray Rukun Yamani, Rukun Shami, so on and so forth, Hajj Aswad, and so on and so forth. You can pray in any direction. It is the only time, it is the only time in which you can pray in every direction facing the Kaaba. In every different corner of the Kaaba, you can you can try. Every single day, if you go to the Kaaba, you can, okay, I want to pray here, I want to pray there. You can pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any direction, not away from the Kaaba, of course, facing the Kaaba, but in, in any angle, in any direction. And that culmination is signified by the tawaf. Like when you do tawaf, you're actually praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single angle. So you're testing every single angle, every single angle in the Kaaba. And if you notice, if you notice, the tawaf is actually an anti-clockwise motion. Like normally when you want to unscrew something, you go anti-clockwise. And you want to screw something in, you go clockwise, right? So this, this motion of anti-clockwise is an ascending motion. It signifies that you're going upwards when you're making tawaf. You're going upwards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your spirit is going upwards. It's it's meant to recharge you when you go, when you make tawaf to around the Kaaba, it's meant to recharge you. And the Kaaba is also in line with Baytul Ma'mur, which is another Kaaba that is in in the heavens. The angels are the one that is doing tawaf at Baytul Ma'mur. So you and the angels are, are in unison when you're making tawaf around the Kaaba. Like subhanAllah. Both of you are like ascending to, to heaven in an anti-clockwise fashion. This is something that blows my mind. I know if, if it doesn't interest you, I, I'm sorry, but it's something that boggles my mind. It's, it's, it's so perfect. Islam is so perfect. It's like beautifully crafted because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is that sent, sent Islam to us. It, it's a gift to us through the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, the last thing I like to share about Hajj is this. You know, when you, when you go to Hajj and you I mean you see the Kaaba for the first time and you start crying, like, oh my God, I've seen it. For real life, like, it's in front of me and you start crying. And for a lot of people, they cry because, you know, of the sins that they possess. You know, they they, they seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they're crying because of the sins that they, they have in their heart. Now, I want to change that a little bit. When you go to Hajj, when you go to Hajj, when you get the opportunity, Allahumma ameen, when you get to go to Hajj, when you, when you see the Kaaba for the first time, the reason why you're crying, it's not because of the sins that you have. The reason why you're crying is because you left everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You left everything behind, your children, your spouse, your wealth, your clothes, your luxury items, your house, so on and so forth, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, can you imagine that? Can you imagine anything else other than the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would drive someone to do that? Like, can you imagine if, if your boss were to come and tell you, hey, um, next week you have to leave your uh, your family behind. You have to leave your wealth. You have to leave your job. You have to go to the middle of a desert and with two towels, two cloths, wrap yourself around and, and yeah, do some stuff. No one is going to do that. Right? No one is going to do that. 
like subhanallah, the fact that we cry when we see the Kaaba is because we willingly went and sacrificed everything just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do so. Just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do so, to leave everything for his sake. And we did that. And the moment we reach the Kaaba and we see the Kaaba, everything is like all, everyone's starting to cry. Because you left everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the reason why we're crying, right? That's the reason why we're crying. We're not crying because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. Of course, yeah, um, when you perform hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Of course, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that, you know, if you have hajj mabrur, it's as if you were reborn, as if you were like sinless, right? We understand that. But every act of worship, every act of worship, in a way, have forgiveness with it. If you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you make salah, if you make zakah, so uh, you fast in the month of Ramadan, everything has an element of forgiveness in it. So you are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven when you go to hajj. But the reason why, the reason why we're crying is because we understand the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we willingly sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's the reason why we're crying actually. So we understand that it is the power of faith that actually drives us to the Kaaba, to Baytul Haram. It is the power of faith that we have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so I encourage everyone, I encourage everyone to go to, to, to Hajj or Umrah. If you get the chance, don't wait until, you, oh, I need to be ready and then I'll go. No, don't wait until you're ready. You are ready. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once you, you hear the sound, you hear the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, go, go. Because once the moment you reach there, You'll understand what faith really means. You'll truly understand it. The moment you see the Kaaba, you're like, yes, I did it. I sacrificed everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. Like I, I see the Kaaba and I am ready. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has, he's, he has given me this opportunity. I just didn't know I had it right until I'm there. So everyone, if you have the chance to go to Kaaba, if you have the chance to fulfill your Umrah and Hajj, go. Just take the chance. Go. Bismillah. Sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Because the moment you reach and when you cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll understand that the reason why you're crying is because you sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't that beautiful? That's just beautiful. I mean, I'm just, it's just beautiful. Let me just put it that way. It's super beautiful. Jameel jitten. Sorry. Subhanallah, I'm like, I'm mind blown. So uh, yeah, I don't want to make this video too long. Sorry for the unshaven bill today because uh, I'm doing Qurban. I'm supposed to shave after I, the Qurban is finished. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, don't, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. It will really help me build this channel, inshallah. Trying to keep it consistent. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you next time. Assalamu alaikum.